So again, welcome, thanks for being here. We're gonna do a little uh, core work lying down the back before we get up on the mat. So I'm gonna have you start here with your feet planted underneath your knees, about hip width apart, and let's let the arms open out to the sides with the palms facing up. And we'll take just a few moments here for centering and breath work before we begin, so you can close your eyes if you like. And in a morning practice, when we start lying down on the back, we have to just take special care not to let the body go back into that sleepy state. So we're not going to be here too long before we breathe, or excuse me, before we move. So just take a moment to let yourself really connect to the floor beneath you. Feeling the contact between the floor and your body, in your feet, in the back of your pelvis, the sacrum, the muscles in your back. the back of your palm, your elbows and your upper arms, the back of your head. Let's take a moment to notice all the parts of you that are connecting to the ground. Then bring your attention to the movement of your breath cycle. Noticing how your abdomen rises and expands as you inhale. And then contracts and draws back in toward yourself as you exhale. Start to consciously slow down the speed of your breath. And also think about expanding not just outward on the front side of the body, but also side to side and into the back side of your body. So feeling yourself fill any space between you and the floor every time you breathe in. Once you've developed that slower, deeper breath, you can float your eyes open. We're gonna use that to coordinate some reclined spinal waves. So these may not feel as deep as when we do them from table pose, but it's gonna help you really isolate the pelvic movement. So with the arms open out to the side, I want you to start tilting your pelvis so that you try and press your tailbone into the earth and arch your lower back as if you could slide like your arm underneath your low back. And then really open the chest and rib cage, arching as much as you can. And then exhale, start to curl your tailbone toward your heels, flattening your lower back. And then squeeze your glutes and maybe lift your butt off the ground a little bit. So we're rounding now. So let's take that with the breath. Start to take the tailbone down, arch your low back, open the ribcage and chest, creating that concave curve. And exhale, send it down, tailbone toward the heels, maybe the hips lift up a little bit. Coordinate that movement with your breath, doing these spinal waves, lying down on your back. So your shoulders don't ever leave the floor. And again, it may not feel like you get as deep of a position in either direction as you would in table pose, but we're really focusing on the movement in the pelvis and how the spine follows that.
And now start to let the exhalation phase lift more of your back up off of the ground. So as you tuck the tailbone toward the heels, maybe your low back lifts up a little bit like low bridge and then you bring it down and arch again, inhaling, exhaling round, lifting a little more of your spine up off the ground and then releasing. So get into a rhythm with those two movements now, gradually lifting up higher and higher into a bridge pose and coming back down, arching. Take two more of these. Good, and then let yourself settle back down, let your spine come into a neutral position. Good. From here, slide your left leg down onto the mat and bring your right knee into your chest. Take a moment here just to feel the hip release. Good. And then hold on to the back of the thigh instead of the front of the shin and reach your heel up toward the ceiling without a strap right now. Just testing the water, seeing where the hamstrings are this morning. Energize through the front of the ankles. So flex there so you're reaching through the heel. Good. And then we're going to do a little lift. Tuck your chin and feel your belly button go down toward the mat as you contract and walk your hands up the leg. Try to bring the nose and knee a little closer together. Really contracting the abdominal wall, but still breathing. The left leg stays rooted to the earth. One more inhalation. And exhale, walk it back down. Good, we're gonna leave the leg in the air, open the arms out to the side again, palms facing up. And see if here you can feel a little bit of your normal lumbar arch come back into play. So you're kind of tilting your pelvis so that your tailbone and sacrum press more into the floor. And start to feel your abdominal wall fire up. Good, we're gonna do a few leg raises working on hip flexor strength, which really are part of our core area. It's not just the abdominals. The next time you inhale, lower the leg until it just hovers above the mat. And then exhale, slowly bring it back in by contracting through your core. Good, a few more times. Inhale to lower the leg. Exhale, slowly return. Try not to swing it. Use your strength. Two more. Inhale, lower to hover. Exhale, return. Last one, inhale, lower to hover. Exhale, return. Good, bend the knee, hug it in again. Let your low back flatten into the floor. Good, from here we're gonna take a reclined spinal twist, move the knee a little bit away from you and then cross it over. Right arm floats out to the side as the right knee drops down. Take a few deep breaths here. Releasing your low back from the work it just did. And then unwind the twist. Good. Bend both of your knees. Just adjust your hips if you need to so they're centered and aligned below your shoulders. And then slide your right leg down and bring your left knee into your chest, hugging it close. Right leg is anchoring to the floor. Good, and then let's hold the back of the thigh instead of the front of the shin and reach your heel up toward the ceiling, just seeing where the hamstrings are at this morning. The leg may or may not fully straighten, but be where you are. And now we're gonna take our lift. A strong exhalation is gonna contract your abdominal wall, tuck your chin, and roll up, walking your hands higher up the leg trying to bring the nose and knee closer together. Full contraction of your abdominals. Your lower back is connected to the floor here. Good, let's exhale, walk it down. The leg is gonna stay up in the air. Let's open the arms out to the side again. 
And now try and find a little bit of arch in your lower back. So it's not flat, but we have some space there. Good, on your inhalation breath, lower your left leg until it just hovers. And exhale, contract your abdomen to slowly bring the leg up. Good, again, inhale, lower the leg. Exhale, bring it up. Two more, inhale. And exhale, inhale, and exhale. Good, bend the knee, hug it in toward you, let your low back flatten for a moment to release from the work. And then move the knee a little bit away from your body so there's more space for the twist, and then cross it over. Left arm floats out to the side, countering the leg. Nice and open through the rib cage and the left side of your chest. Good, let's unwind. Plant both feet on the floor, adjust your hips so they feel centered below you. Good, and then let's hug both knees into the upper body, rock a little bit side to side, massaging your lower back and your hips. And then we're going to rock up and down the spine in order to come up. Swing your knees toward your face and roll up and back down. Do that a few times. And then give yourself enough momentum on the next one to rock up and stay there. Cross your ankles and then come forward and find table pose, adjusting yourself toward the front of your mat. Good. All right, so from here we're going to come into a cross lateral balance. We're going to keep the left palm on the ground, reach your right palm forward, and then your left leg back. Find one long line of energy, really press firmly down through your left hand. Your navel is gently drawing up and in, but you're still breathing, so expanding more in the sides and through the upper part of the rib cage. Good. Put just the hand down, keep the leg where it is, and then we're going to send the left leg out to the side, bend the knee, and try and touch your outer shoulder or tricep. Good, and then re-extend. So we're going to take that with the breath. The exhalation is going to bring the left knee out to the side and then up toward your shoulder or tricep, and then inhale, reach it back. Two more. Exhale. Turn the hip out. Bring the knee up to the left elbow or tricep. Exhale. Or excuse me. Inhale. Return. Last one. Exhale. Contract. Bring the knee in. And inhale. Release. Good. Put the knee down. Sit back in the child's pose. Let your arms wrap around the legs. Hands resting by the feet. Just giving the wrists a little break. Good, all right, we're gonna take that to the other side, coming back up. So the left arm is going to extend forward, right leg reaches back, finding your one long line. Pressing really strongly down through the right hand, navel is gently drawing up and in. Good, and then put just your hand down. Exhale, open the hip out to the side, and then bend the knee, trying to kiss your right shoulder or tricep, whatever you can reach, and then re-extend the leg. All right, with the breath. Exhale, knee to right arm. Inhale, reach it back. Exhale, knee to arm. Exhale, back. Once more. Knee to arm, and reach it back. Good, all right, place that knee down onto the mat. Let's flip the hands now, so the fingers point back toward your knees, and the back of your hand is on the ground, so that we stretch the wrists in the other direction. And maybe shift back and forth a little bit here. Good, all right, return. 
return the palms to their regular position. Spread the fingers widely, tuck your toes and shift back and then up coming into downward facing dog. But take a few moments to adjust your pose if you need to so that you find that nice long stance. And let's pedal the legs a little bit, bending one knee as you reach the opposite heel down, back and forth, side to side. We did a little lengthening of the hamstring, but it may feel not quite awake yet, so just know that they'll gradually warm up as we continue to move. Good. On your next breath in, look forward. As you breathe out, step up to the front of your mat. Once you get there, hang over your legs and stand forward fold, pressing evenly down through both feet. Let your neck release, head is heavy. And then take your hands to your shins. On an inhalation, come into the flat back position. On an exhalation, fold down, letting it go. Twice more, inhale, get even longer. Exhale, release. Once more, inhale, nice and long. Exhale, let it go. Good. Bend the knees like you're sitting back into a chair. Slowly roll up through ragdoll one vertebra, one vertebra at a time. Excuse me. Coming up to stand. And then find a tall mountain pose. Then we're going to move through a few rounds of sun salutations and then some modified flow sequences based off of that. We'll start with traditional sun series A. Inhale, reach the arms up and overhead. Exhale, dive forward over the legs. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, bend your knees, step to plank. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, slowly lower down. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, make your way to downward facing dog. Good, stay there and breathe. One more breath in, look forward. As you breathe out, step to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up, reaching over your head. And exhale, release your arms. I'm going to add some hip opening now. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, bend your knees, touch the ground. Lunge your left foot all the way back and then bring that knee to the floor. Point the toes, drive down through the contact of your feet and then inhale, rise up. Low crescent lunge. Take a few breaths here. The next time you exhale, lean down, hands to the floor, tuck your back toes and lift the knee, plant your palms and step to plank. Take a deep breath in, exhale, slowly lower down, inhale, cobra or up dog, exhale, down dog. Take several breaths here, noticing the difference between the right and left sides. On your next breath in, look forward. And then exhale, step to the hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, release the arms. Second side, inhale, reach up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, bend the knees, touch the ground, right foot steps all the way back, and then knee to the ground. 
point those toes and drive down through both contact points. Inhale, rise up, low crescent lunge. One more deep breath in. Exhale, release the hands, tuck the toes and lift that knee. Good, plant the palms and step to plank. One deep breath in. Exhale, slowly lower down. Inhale, cobra pose. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, press up. Exhale, lift back. Down dog. One more breath in and look forward. Exhale, step to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, rise up, reaching over your head. Exhale, and release. Good, all right, we're gonna take one more round. Sorry, I have to get this straight here piece out of my way. All right, we're gonna take one more round, just kind of a variation of Sun Series B. So we start with chair pose. Take your feet hip width apart. On an inhalation, sit back into your heels, bend the knees, and reach the arms forward. We're gonna hold here a few breaths. Feel your core region really fire up. Lumbar muscles are active. Navel's gently drawing up and in. One more inhalation. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, bend the knees, step to plank. One breath in. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, make your way to down dog. From down dog, raise your right leg up into the air. Inhale. Look forward and exhale, step that foot into a high lunge. We're gonna stay with high lunge instead of warrior one. So your back heel is gonna be up, deep bend in the front knee. Inhale and rise up, finding your balance in high crescent lunge. One more deep breath in and exhale. Exhale, the hands down. You're welcome to skip this vinyasa if you want to go right to down dog, or you can step back to plank. Take a breath in, and exhale to come down. Inhale, cobra up dog. Exhale, down dog. Other side, raise your left leg up, and inhale. Look forward, exhale, lunge that foot all the way in between the hands. Back heel's gonna stay up. Inhale, rise up, high crescent lunge. One more breath in, exhale, hands back down. Again, you can feel free to skip this part and go right to down dog or step back to plank and inhale, exhale, descend. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog. Good, slow, steady breath. The next time you inhale, look forward. Exhale, step to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale. Inhale, forward fold. Make sure your feet are hip width apart. Bend your knees deeply, sitting way back. Inhale, find chair pose. Take a few breaths here. The next time you exhale, stand tall, reaching through your fingertips, and then release your arms to your sides. Mountain pose. Good, take a few deep breaths here. Noticing how your body responded to those sequences. Again, slow down your breathing. 
as you slow down your heart rate. Good, all right, we're gonna continue with our core activation that we've been doing this morning. So we're gonna do some side bending to work on strengthening the muscles in the side of the waist, the obliques. You're gonna be standing on your right foot we're going to cross the left foot back behind it and slightly off of the mat. The back foot, your left one, or excuse me, the back leg is going to be straight. I want you to let your right knee now bend and lean some weight into the right leg. Okay, so let's stand tall. Make sure your pelvis faces forward. The right arm is going to reach down by your side. The left arm is going to lift up and lengthen you. And then on an exhalation, we're going to bend to the right, contracting the right side to stretch the left. Every time you exhale, find a little more contraction here. The right arm is reaching down, fingers are seeking the left toes. Good, and then stepping out of this, I find it's easier to lean forward a little bit, putting more weight into your right foot, and then just step the left foot back to the mat, reach up with both of your arms, lengthening the sides of the body, and then release. The other side, I'm standing on my left foot, we're gonna cross the right foot behind and step it just off of the mat. The right leg is straight, let your left knee bend a little bit so you have weight in that foot. Good. Hips are square, facing forward. Your left arm is going to hang down. The right arm raises up now. Lengthen that side. And then lean over to the left, really contracting those side muscles here. Stretching deeply through the right. Little variation of our crescent moon pose. Last full breath cycle here. And then lean your weight forward into your left foot so it's easier to balance when you step out of this. Reach both arms up, mountain pose. Exhale, dive forward over your legs. Let your head drop. Inhale, flat back position. Exhale, bend your knees and step to plank pose. All right, we're gonna do a little work here in plank. Feel free to take breaks whenever you need. So when we were doing that balancing table before and you brought the right knee or you brought one knee up toward your armpit or shoulder, we're going to try that here. So bend your right knee in toward your chest, open the hip out to the side, and try and bring the knee to kiss your tricep or armpit. Good, step it back. Other side, bend your left knee in, open the hip out to the side, and then try and bring the knee up to the shoulder or armpit. Good, step it back. Let's try it once more for each side. Right knee bends in, hip opens, and then bring the knee even farther forward. Good, step it back. Other side, left knee in. Open the hip, knee farther forward. Step it back. Good, lift up to down dog. Let your head and neck release. Take a few moments to steady your breath. Good, and then bring your knees to the floor. Take child's pose, sitting back on the heels, letting your shoulders and your upper body just melt down. Good, I need to turn my fan on. My heat kicked on here, and it is not a day that requires heat. But the leg is just not coming high enough, 
then you could take two blocks, let me just grab this second one here. This, but they need to be sturdy, I wouldn't put them too high. But elevating your hands on blocks in plank gives more space between your body and the floor. And so this movement that we just did might be a little easier for you if you're elevated up on blocks. All right, so we're gonna try it just once more. So go ahead and find yourself either in table, doing it like we did at the beginning, in plank with hands on the ground, or I'm gonna do it with hands on blocks, all right? So let's just step directly there to that table or plank. We're gonna go right side first, bring the right knee up and in, open the hip out to the side, and try and kiss the outer tricep. Good, step it back. Other side, left knee in, out to the side, kiss the arm, step it back. Once more for each side. Right knee in, out, kiss the arm, step back. Left knee in, out to the side, kiss the arm, step it back. Good, if you're in plank pose, bring the knees to the floor, get rid of the blocks if you use them. And then let's again, just take child's pose for a moment. Sit back, let your shoulders soften. There's a lot in the upper body, so let's just release some of that energy for a few moments before we continue. From here, return to downward facing dog, please. Go ahead and lift yourself up and back. And from this downward facing dog, take one deep breath in and look forward. Exhale and step to the front of your mat. Take your hands to your shins. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way up to stand, reaching overhead. And exhale, release your arms, mountain pose. Good, just take a few breaths here. Notice how your body feels. All right, we're gonna take just two more standing postures here. I'm gonna have you take blocks, excuse me, if you use them for triangle pose. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have one block. I'm going to put mine on the medium side. So we're going to take triangle with the left foot forward first. So the foot is a little bit ahead of your blocks if you're using it. You can also use your shin or your ankle. Take a big step back with your right foot and increase the distance so it's long enough for your triangle. And you want either heel to heel or heel to arch aligned with your feet. Both legs are straight and the pelvis is basically open to the long edge of your mat. But your, uh, and your upper body is too, right? So you're trying to kind of open yourself to the side. Let's open the arms, engage actively in your legs, and then lean your upper body forward, but feel like your hips are going the opposite direction toward the end of your mat. Good, reach, 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 feeling this deep hamstring stretch in the front leg. And then just pivot the arms, finding your block or your shin somewhere in your lower leg for triangle pose. So in doing that, we keep the length that you created when you were leaning forward. It's a nice, long side body. Good, and then this is totally optional, but you can add a little bit of core work. So right now my hand is on the block. I'm gonna contract my core and hover my hand an inch off of the block. And maybe you stay there just a moment and touch back down, right? Or maybe you hover and hold, really firing up lower back, obliques, front of the abdominals, legs are still active. And you can touch back down anytime. Good, a few more breaths here. Whether you're holding and hovering or you're going back and forth between hovering and touching. To come out, we're all gonna hover for a moment, contract your abdominal wall, lift up off of your support, and all the way back up. Good, relax the arms. And then, well, let's actually, let's pivot. So take your block with you. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to reach down. Just rotate your back toes in and your other toes forward. So you're gonna face the other end of your mat. You can put that block down. 
All right, so the right leg should be the front one now, active and straight, pelvis is open, let's open the arms again. You're gonna lean your upper body forward, so we're lengthening right side, but the hips go back in space. So reach in that direction as far as you can, and then pivot the arms, finding your lock or your lower leg, if that's what you're using, but first, full contact with the support. Good, breathe here. Feel those long lines of energy through the arms and through the legs. And then totally optional core activation. You can hover your hand just an inch off of whatever you're using for support. You can stay there or go back and forth between using the support and coming away from it. Just seeing how it feels to fire up this part of the body. Good, and then to come up, you're gonna contract and hover for a moment and then rise all the way up. Good, let go of the arms. Now let's turn the right toes in so that we're facing the long edge of the mat. Feet are slightly turned in toward each other. Both legs are still straight. Bring your hands to the waist. We're just gonna finish our standing sequence with a wide-legged forward bend. Let's glide the shoulders and elbows back to open the heart space. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, lean your hips back in space and your upper body forward as you fold, dropping the head. Good, bring your hands down to the ground in between your feet. If they don't touch, your block should be easy enough to reach. You can set your block down and hold there. Last few breaths here. Good, let's inhale and come to the flat back position. Walk your hands or walk forward. And then look over at the front of your mat, whichever one is facing your screen. Turn those toes forward and walk your hands there ending up in a lunge just very briefly. And then from there, step it to downward facing. to the ground and have a seat directly on your mat. You come to the middle of the mat. We're going to work on boat pose and some variations. All right, so sitting nice and tall, hold on to the back of your legs, lift up, upward through your chest and rib cage, and try and find that little bit of lumbar curve in your lower back. Good, lean back, maintaining that until you can get your feet off the ground and find that balance point on your hips. Squeeze your legs together and lift your feet as much as you're able to, now firing up the front side of your abdomen. Good, you can stay here or you can try releasing your arms forward, holding a few breaths in boat pose. Good, let's cross the ankles, exhale, place the feet down, find a cross-legged seat. I'm using my hands to open the knees, and then just lean forward slightly over your legs. And then we're going to take that leg again, lift yourself up, bring the knees together, hold the back of your legs, elevate your chest and rib cage, and try and draw your lumbar spine in. Find a balance point from there and lift your feet any and out. You can stay here or reach the arms forward. Good, cross your other ankle on top. Set the ankles down, use your hands to gently open your knees here. 
here and just lean forward. Last one, come on back up. Bring your knees together. Find that lift, the length in your spine. Bend your balance point. Good. Feet up. Holding here or letting it go. Good. Last time, cross ankles, feet and ankles down, open the knees, and move forward. Good. All right. Come on back up. We're going to now come to the floor, so lying down, and we're going to work on half boat pose. I'll give you some variations for this as well. If this is not comfortable or accessible, it does require quite a bit of hip flexor work so you can have an alternative once we get to it. So you're going to have your knees bent, feet on the ground, lay your arms down by your sides. Let's actually break it down into the first half of the pose and then we'll try adding the legs. So you can always just still work with this first half of the pose. When we were starting practice and we were doing those spinal waves here on the back, I want you to do the one where you tuck your tailbone toward your knees and your low back really flattens into the floor. That's really essential for this. When we have that little tuck, we lengthen the lower back and start to contract the abdominal wall. So keeping that tuck, reach your arms forward, tuck your chin toward your chest, and then roll your head and shoulders up off of the mat, trying to bring your fingers toward your heels. So that's just the first half of the pose. This is what the upper body does in half boat. It's going to feel like you're doing a crunch, but holding it. Good. Let's roll down. Let the abdomen release. Take a breath or two. So we'll build it here in stages. When you're ready to try that again, tuck your tailbone toward your heels. Low back flattens. Abdominal wall contracts. Tuck your chin and roll up, fingers toward your feet. And now let's straighten the left leg forward, up off of the, the ground, right foot still on the mat. So this is a great option. You're like 75% of the way to half boat pose. Good, bring the left foot back to the ground, roll your spine down, take a few breaths. Now we're going to try straightening the right leg. Tuck your tailbone, back flattens, tuck your chin, roll up, reaching the fingers forward, left foot stays on the floor, right leg extends. And that right leg is up off of the ground, of course, right recovery. Good, release the foot, roll back down, a couple of breaths to recover. So any of those options are great. If you're going to try and extend both legs, I don't recommend doing it one at a time, actually. That can be too much for your lower back. So I start with the knees in toward my body, feet off of the ground. And then I'm going to do that same upper body action, contract the abdominal wall, roll up, and then from there, extend both legs together at the same time. Right? So this is our last time you do either of the two versions I just did, or you're trying this. Good, let it go. Hug your knees into your upper body. Rock a little bit side to side. Good. All right, we're going to start to go in the other direction now, lengthening the abdominal wall. Let's take the feet down, lay your arms down by your sides, tuck your shoulder blades closer together underneath you to open your chest, and roll up slowly, finding bridge pose. 
start to feel that the length through all the muscles on the front side of the body, through your hip flexors, which just contracted quite a lot, maybe wiggling those shoulder blades a little closer together. One more breath in, and exhale, roll it down. Good, separate your shoulders. Take a few moments just to rest here. And then we'll take that a second time. Shoulder blades come closer together underneath you, wiggling them in. And press down through your palms and your heels. Tuck your tailbone toward your knees as you lift up, arching in the upper back. Bridge pose. Feel free to connect the hands together under you if that's available to you. Or maybe just work the shoulders a little closer together with the palms still flat on the ground. If your hands are connected, separate them before you roll down, and then we'll all bring the spine and hips back to the mat. Take a few breaths, just to pause here. All right, last bridge. Go ahead and set up the shoulders. Lifting up when you're ready. Finding that nice high arch in the upper back, tailbone is tucking toward your knees. Good. When you're ready to come out, separate the hands if they were connected first, and roll your spine down. Good. Separate the shoulder blades. Take a few moments just to lie here, letting your back melt into the earth. And then let's bring the feet all the way together so that they touch each other, and let your knees float open out to the sides. So the hip flexors do a lot of work when we do core activation in the postures that we practice today. So this is a great way to help just lengthen that region in the body, especially the psoas muscle group. You can always support this pose, of course, by putting knee, your uh, blocks outside of your knees. But if you're happy here, we'll just let the legs rest in space. Your hands can be anywhere you like right now, anywhere that feels comfortable. Take about 10 breaths here. When you're ready to release the pose, gently close the legs. Good. Bring your knees into your upper body, hug your arms around the legs, and rock a little bit side to side. Turn your knees around in a big circle a few times to massage your sacrum. 
go in both directions. Good. And then we're going to come to rest in Shavasana. So go ahead and get yourself comfortable on your mat. If there's any final little movement or recline pose that you feel like you need to do for your body to feel settled, go ahead and do that. I'm going to turn my hand off now. Once you feel settled on your back or whatever relaxation posture you're doing, close your eyes. And just give your body a few moments to let go of any lingering active energy. Softening every muscle and every joint. Letting go of effort so the body can rest. Take one final deep inhalation through the nose if possible. And out the mouth. And let that side be the gesture of release to your breath. Inviting your natural breath back to your body. Letting go of that focused, controlled, deep breathing.
slowly bring your attention back to your breath. <clears throat> and take a few deeper breaths as you begin to move a little bit in your body. Take any little movement or stretch that would feel good to you here on your back. And then eventually bend your knees and roll to one side, curling up into a fetal pose. And just pausing there to notice how you feel right now. <clears throat> With as little effort as possible, press yourself up from there, taking a comfortable seat your eyes still closed. Feel your spine get tall. Feel the space around your upper body and start to fill that with your breath. You can bring the palms together in front of your heart and we'll end by chanting all one time. Taking a deep breath in. Oh. Exhale and gently bow your head, acknowledging yourself for making the time and space to practice this morning and expressing gratitude to your body. And thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed this practice. Enjoy this beautiful day. Hope to see you again next week.